So welcome back to another Motobob video where today we're going to be talking about the 2022 updates for the Honda Africa Twin lineup. Now this was already a brilliant adventure bike, but they've given it a fresh lick of paint as well as a few nice tweaks to the spec. And so in this video, I'm gonna go over the four key updates that you need to know about. But first, a quick refresher on the current lineup so that you can truly appreciate the changes. Basically, you have two models, the off-road bias base Africa Twin, and then the more feature-laden adventure sports, which is more set up for long distance rides and touring. Both of them get the same 1084cc parallel twin which is a real peach of an engine in terms of feel and character. I mean, at 100 horsepower, it's not the most powerful when you set it against the big adventure bikes like the GS or Multistrada V4, but don't let those headline figures put you off trying one. There's plenty of pep there for most riding, and the way it delivers it makes it genuinely a pleasure to ride. I particularly like the exhaust note, with a control valve that closes at low revs to boost torque and efficiency, but it gives it this really distinctive thudding pull in sound. As you get on the gas, it opens up for free-flowing top-end power and it results in a bit more of an aggressive roar. Both bikes get the same aluminium twin spar frame with a removable subframe making it easier to replace if damaged when dropped. There's an adjustable 45mm upside down fork and a preload and rebound adjustable monoshock both from Showa and brakes are from Nissin with some 4 pot radially mounted calipers on 310mm discs at the front. The electronics got a big boost at the last major update with a 6 axis IMU feeding lean data into the riding aids. So you get cornering sensitive traction control and ABS as well as wheelie control all linked up to the 6 available riding modes. There's also cruise control, self cancelling indicators and an emergency emergency stop signal feature and all of these electronic goodies are managed through a six and a half inch TFT display. One of the best features for me is that you can hook your phone up through a USB socket on the dash to enable either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, giving you access to your favorite navigation apps as well as audio and messaging on the dash. There's a smaller LCD display below so you can still see the basics like speed and gear position whilst CarPlay is active. So that's all the stuff they have in common and here's where they differ. The base model's off-road bias means that it gets a shorter windscreen, a little less bodywork, and a smaller fuel tank. The wheels and tyres are also tube type, which will be preferable to some off-road riders. The touring bias of the Adventure Sports is obvious, with the fuel tank growing from 18.8 litres to 24.8. So at Honda's claimed consumption figures, range goes up from 238 miles to a whopping 314. The bodywork and windscreen are also bigger to give the rider more protection from the wind. There's bigger handguards, heated grips, cornering headlights, a bigger skid plate, a rear rack, and tubeless spoked wheels, all as standard. On top of that, as an optional extra, there's also Showa's ERA electronic suspension, which takes data from stroke sensors and the IMU to deliver the desired ride quality as specified by the rider through the switchgear and dash. You can also adjust preload on the shock while stationary, so great for picking up a passenger. Both bikes are available with a manual gearbox or with Honda's dual clutch transmission. This basically acts as an automatic, although you can set it to a manual mode and choose the gears yourself from the paddles on the left switch gear. And so those two models effectively grow to six options at the dealer. You've got the base model with a manual or DCT box, and then the Adventure Sports with or without DCT and electronic suspension. I've tried the manual base bike and the DCT Adventure Sports. There are links in the description to my review videos, but in short, they're pretty damn good in either spec. And so on to the updates for 2022, starting with that DCT system. Now, one of the common objections is that it can be a little tricky to use at low speeds, such as when performing tight maneuvers. This year, Honda say that they've optimized the settings in first and second gear to allow for smoother handling from a standing start and at very low speeds. Now, there's definitely a bit of a knack to riding it and also some optimal settings, be it with the XADV, the Goldwing, the Rebel 1100, or the Africa Twin, all of which I've reviewed with DCT 
ECT, you really want to adjust the throttle response to the most gentle setting, then put it in manual mode so that you can keep it in first or second, apply a little bit of constant throttle, and then really use the rear brake to modulate speed as you can't slip the clutch like you would with a manual bike. Generally, I've found it pretty easy to get on with once you get the hang of it, but of course, if Honda have made it better and reduced the need to change the settings, then I'm all for it. It would increase the convenience of the DCT system, and the whole point of it is convenience. It's also great to see them continuing to refine it. It already ties into the riding mode, so sport mode holds onto the gears, for example. Lean data from the IMU is used to ensure that shifting is optimized whilst cornering, and it also has incline detection. The more and more that Honda refine it, the better it gets, and so this update to low speed shifting can only be a good thing. Now, it's not a huge change, but the base model now gets a rear rack as standard. Not only is this a good thing if you want to strap a bag on, but it also features some proper grab rails for the passenger as opposed to the usual flimsy seat strap. Anyone who's ever ridden on the back of a bike will testify to the huge increase in enjoyment when you've got something sturdy to cling on to. As for the Adventure Sports, well, it used to come with a pretty tall windscreen, so even in the lowest setting, it could obstruct your view if it was covered in dirt. They've shortened it for this new model year, which seems like a sensible move because now you can peep over the top in the low setting, but if you want full protection, you can still raise it to one of the five positions. So some nice little tweaks here and there, but for me, the big one is the new paint schemes. They're calling it a big logo design on the base model, and you've got three color choices of Pearl Glare White Tricolor, Grand Prix Red, and Matte Ballistic Black. The Adventure Sports now comes with a cracked terrain graphic, with two options of the Pearl Glare White Tricolor and the Matte Ballistic Black Metallic. Honestly, I'd be perfectly happy with any of them. It's always been one of the best looking adventure bikes on the market and this year's no different. But if I had to choose, I think the Adventure Sports in the matte black looks super stealthy and I like the look of those tubeless rims laced to the edges. But as always, I'd love to know which one you'd pick down in the comments below. And if you're new here and you wanna see more motorcycle news videos like this, including a review of this 2022 update as soon as I can get hold of one, then please do hit subscribe and I'll see you then.